Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we're going to make the workbook for the printable glassing bag mini album template. I wasn't going to make this, but my mom asked me to make hers for her. I wasn't going to show you guys how to make it because it's kind of the same or, well, there's a few little tweaks, but it's mostly the same as the Everlasting workbook, which there is a playlist down below of all the different workbooks that I've made. But since my mom wanted me to make hers for her, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and record it because I'm going to be doing it anyway. So, first I want to say, um, well, let me show you. This is the album that we made so far with the Glassine Bag Printable Mini Album. So, it kind of looks like that, right? Isn't it sweet? So if you want to check this out, I'll also put the playlist for this down below as well. It's the only one we've made so far, but I have plans for more. <laughs> okay, first I just want to say there are many different ways to make a workbook. You don't even have to make a workbook. But this has become my favorite way of making the workbook. So it's a laminated workbook, and it's got the... Um, traceable templates in there plus if there's a mat which this template has mats and the mats are on top it just makes it easier to work and then there is also or faster even to work to make your albums then there is also pockets so that you can store extra stuff that you don't use when you're creating um, your albums so this is my favorite way to make a workbook you can also just use sheet protectors and a binder and just put your pages in there and your leftover bits and your traceable templates and all of that. You can do all of that um, just with a regular sheet protectors and binders or you can just put them in a folder. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever works best for you. Now granted, this way probably is the most expensive way <laughs> to make a workbook. But if you're going to be making more than one workbook, I think it's worth the investment. I've made, I don't know how many now a lot <laughs> and um, using a second hand uh, uh, laminator that my husband brought home from work it's kind of broken so they got a new one at his work so he brought it home to me so I use that and then you buy packages of the laminating sheets or laminating pouches and you know you can buy packs of hundred a hundred or so and that'll make you a couple different workbooks so uh, the Bind It All, you know, I use the Bind It All all the time. I will have a list down below, uh, an Amazon list just for this. Everything that you would need to make the uh, workbooks. So if you guys want to make this workbook, I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to need. And the exact way that I made this workbook. Because remember I told you I did a few things a little bit different this time. So uh, I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you everything that I printed out. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So I'm going to set this one aside for now. So the first thing I did for this workbook is I printed onto 110 pound white cardstock. Now you don't have to do that. You could use regular paper if you want. Um, I just think it makes a sturdier workbook when you use cardstock or use whatever cardstock you have. Um, you don't have to use 110 pound. You can use 65 pound. Just whatever you have in that case, you use that. So the first thing I did was I printed the guidebook. So this is the first time I have printed a guide or made a guidebook where I actually put the information on a set of templates. Okay. So I printed the guidebook out front and back. So uh, I told my printer, I opened that PDF and I told it to print on both sides. So to Depending on your printer, I had to, it printed off one side and then I had to physically take that paper out and put it back into the tray and then it printed off the other side. So my, that's how my printer works. So you need to find out how yours works if you want to do it this way. So I printed it off on front and back, right? So the, what happened with this particular workbook is the main base printed off on one side and then the mats for that printed off on the back side. So... I did that. I printed off the entire guidebook, front and back, right? So there, I don't know how many pages it ended up being. How many pages are there? There are 22 pages, so uh, 22, 23, 24. So I think there ended up being just 12 pages altogether. And then the then the very last page, I printed the title page 
front and back because I like my back page to have uh, also have what type of album that guidebook is. So I printed that off front and back for the last page. So that's one set of prints, right? That I printed off. And then I printed another set minus the first two pages. Like the first two pages are the title page and then uh, information. So I didn't print that page off, but I, these are not printed double sided either. But these are the ones that I'm gonna cut out and like this is gonna be my traceable template. And then here is the mat that's gonna go on top of my traceable template, right? So I went through and I printed these onto 110 pound cardstock with the exception of a few pages. So page number three, let me see if I can get it out of here. Page number three is actually the binding piece. So I'm not gonna print, um, I'm not going to print one off to trace, so I didn't print this page off. So I didn't print page number three, which was the binding strip, but then on page number four, I printed it off onto just um, 32 pound paper. So it's a little bit better quality copy paper. So I printed uh, page four and page 21 onto 32 pound copy paper because that is the way that I like to use the glassing bag. So these are the glassing bags that the whole template is based around. And I just like the feel of it. And I'm just going to go ahead and like assemble, like I'm going to assemble this one and I'm going to assemble this one and I'm going to have it stuck to my workbook. So that way, um, if I wanted to use this bag in a different project, I can just take it out and kind of use it, you know, as a visual of where it would fit or this one as well. So these were both were printed onto just 32 pound paper, but then the rest of these were all printed onto uh, thick cardstock, 110 pound cardstock. So I went through and I printed off everything with the exception of these two onto paper and the binding strip page. I didn't print the binding strip and I didn't print this page again. So all of these are all printed out and they'll be, eventually they'll be cut out and my printer, I just replaced one of the toners <laughs> in my printer. And let me show you the difference between what, when you're missing a color, I was missing yellow, and so it was compensating. So this is when I was missing yellow, and then this is when I replaced the toner. So this is actually the right color that the glassine bag is supposed to be. So this is the color when my printer's compensating for me being low on a, on a toner. So this is much prettier than this, just saying. My opinion. But anyway, so my printer, it was brand new and I shouldn't have, I should have printed some other things off first because it kind of did a little mess up um, with some of the ink, but that's okay. It's just a workbook. Um, it's not, you know, I guess it is a gift for my mom, but it's it's just a workbook. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but anyway, so you can see I printed everything off onto cardstock. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, with the exception of page 4 and 21. Okay, so that is all you need to print out. So I'm going to set these aside because I'm going to have to trim all this stuff out. So I'm going to move it to the side for now. Okay, I grabbed my laminator. Ooh, it's pretty hot. And this is going to be really hard to show you guys because there's not much space. Um, but the next two things I'm going to use are, these are the laminating pouches. These are the brand that I happen to find. Um, these are three mil. So I'm going to be using these. And then I'm also going to be using this transparency film. It's acetate. It says it's not used. You should not use it in laser and inkjet printers. But I'm just going to tell you that I do. I don't know. It, it seems to be fine. I don't know why. Why not? Um, but we're not going to be printing on this. We are going to be using these to form pockets. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. Now, if you don't have transparencies, but you have vellum, you could use vellum as well as a replacement. And the vellum, I'm not even sure if the price is that much different. Um, when you like, there's a hundred sheets here, and I don't remember how much this was. Um, the vellum might be a little bit cheaper, um, either way. So you do whatever you have, you use whatever you have. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these out of the box here. 
And then I'm going to grab some of these pouches, these laminating pouches. So again, this is going to be hard for me to show you. Let me move, let me move the laminator over to the side. So for the first page, so for the title page, right, we're just going to stick this in the, the pouch, but we're going to be binding this. So I'm going to stick this all the way. Wait a minute. How do I want to do this? There's a glare. I'm going to stick this to the right side and I'm going to try to center it from top to bottom. Well, maybe not. I am going to be trimming this down. So actually I'm going to push it all the way to the top here and I'm going to go almost all the way to the right side and I'm going to leave this here because this is where the binding is going to go. Right? So there's that one ready to go and I'll end up trimming off this bottom. I couldn't think of what it was that I was going to do or how I did it. I couldn't remember. All right, so there's one. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and run this one through so it doesn't get messed up. So with my laminator, um, it's broken, so I'm going to have to hold this button down, but it doesn't take that long. But this is already heated up, completely hot. You need to do that first. You need to make sure your laminator is super hot. And I think these are relatively inexpensive. Yeah, and oh, I've got it on the wrong setting. <laughs> I had it on five mil instead of three mil. All right, so mine got a little crinkly um, at the top here. So I'm going to run it through again. So there's the title page. All right, so there's the back. So this is one of the reasons why we printed back to front, front to back, what have you. So then let me move this. Again, there's just not much space to show you what we're doing here. So I'm going to set that up there. Okay, so then the next one, again, this laminating sheet. Okay, so now this time I'm going to, um, which I should have done it that way to begin with, we're going to put the bottom of the page at the um, folded part of the pouch, right? And then we're also going to take one of those transparencies and we're going to lay that on top of that page, just like that. And then... And then we're going to stick this page in, go all the way to the bottom, and scoot it over. Whoops. This can be tricky because of static. <laughs> but I'm going to try to open this up a little bit more. So go all the way to the bottom. And then scoot it over just maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge. And so this way, this will be on the right side of the page. And then the binding will be over here on the left. So then I'm going to scoot this machine back over. Obviously, you guys probably wouldn't have to do this if you weren't recording. You wouldn't have to move stuff around. And then I'm going to run that through. right so then we have that now I'm gonna before I do anything else I'm gonna I'm not gonna show you the next step I'm gonna go through oh actually I am gonna show you um, something else <laughs> um, so you want to do all of the pages this way with the exception of a couple so this was page one and page two so page three and four are a little bit different, right? So page three and page four, we're going to make a pocket on both sides. So on this page, there's going to be a pocket here because we're going to trim off the top, but there's not going to be a pocket back here. Okay. 
So it's just going to have one pocket in the front. But this page doesn't have uh, mats, so I'm going to do a pocket for the extra binding strips, and then I'm going to do a pocket for if, uh, on this one, you don't have to do this one, but um, because, I mean, if you print it out, you're probably going to use it, but what if you print out a couple and you don't use them all? You can stick them in here. So we're going to do a pocket on both front and back. Now, so that means we're going to put a piece of that transparency on the front of it and a piece on the back of it. So on both sides of this piece of cardstock is a transparency. So again, I'm gonna put the bottom of the page up next to the fold in the folder here and gotta be careful on this one because there's three layers and then I'm just gonna come about an eighth of an inch away from this edge. I'm gonna Probably got it really good that time. Did I get it? Did I? Did I? Almost. Right? So now there's three layers there. So then I'm going to run that through the machine. Again, if I wasn't recording, I wouldn't be doing a whole lot of this moving around business. <laughs> but I'm trying to show you guys. And since there's three layers, you might need to run that one through another time, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, my, my laminator is not, it's either my laminator or these laminating pouches. I don't know which. I think it's my laminator. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna flip it over this way and I am gonna run it through one more time. Okay, so that page, I'm going to put that, I'm going to add this to the pile. Now the only other page that you need to do the double, um, the double transparency is page, is page 2122. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead put a transparency on the front, transparency on the back, and we'll just go ahead and do this one because the rest of them you just need one transparency. So I'm going to run this one through the machine, probably twice. Okay, so again, this was the only other page that you need two transparencies, one on the front, one on the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just add this to the pile. I'll have to put it in the right order at another time. So now I'm going to go through and do all of these pages, and I'm going to put a transparency on the front side of the page and then run it through my laminator so I'm going to do the rest of the pages right butt it up to the bottom whoops it does make it a little hard I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you the transparency wants to slip and slide everywhere and that's okay you just gotta fiddle with it a little bit so I'm gonna go through and do all the rest of them um, the back page the back you do not need to put a transparency in there you can just send it through the laminator um, no big deal all right I'm gonna do that and then I will be back I'm gonna do all these pages and then I'll be back Okay, I have everything laminated. I'm gonna move this sheet, um, 21 and 22, into the back here, because that's where it belongs. So I have everything laminated, good to go. And I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out. This is a Fiskars Rotary Precision. <laughs> Hold on, here we go. Okay, 
So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna start with the cover piece. I'm actually gonna start with one of the pages. So this is page number one, and in order to turn it into a pocket, I'm gonna put it in my paper trimmer, and I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna trim it at, let's see, 11 and an eighth, I guess. Because what I want to do is I want to have them all the same, all the same height. So I'm going to trim it at 11 and an eighth. And then, so I trimmed that little piece off there, right? Can you see that? So then I should, I have a pocket. So now, because I put that transparency in there, I now have a pocket um, to place extra stuff in. So I'm going to go through and do every single page like that. Line it up to 11 and an eighth. And it might cut some of your paper. Um, there's one pocket, and then this is the one that has two. Oops, that looks very cloudy there, doesn't it? I wonder why, that's interesting. Oh, I bet the ink from the print from this page got stuck a little bit. I don't know. That's interesting. Um, anyway, so you just go through and just trim all of them up to the same height. And each time you do, you want to check to make sure that you're cutting through to make the pocket. And if not, then you just trim another little smidge off. Not a big deal. Like, see this one. Oh, nope. See, I got it. Okay. I was going to say that one didn't, but. All right. And let's see. Oh, here's the back cover. So this one is, I'm just, I'm not going to open it up. I don't want a pocket or anything. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to trim it at 11 and a quarter. Trim it at 11 and a quarter. Yep. So that's the back cover. And so I'm going to do the same thing for the front cover. Um, except I actually put that, did that one different than the rest of them. <laughs> but that's okay. So I'm going to just line it up to 11 and a quarter. So that way both the front and back covers are the exact same. Um, whoops. Are the exact same uh, height. There's the back cover there. I'm going to flip this whole pile over, and then there's the front cover. Right? So that is all there is to that. So then, what I want, I want to get out now is the binding machine. Now, if you don't have a binding machine, why is that a different color? My uh, printer is printing so odd. Maybe I'm almost out of another color. I don't know. <laughs> I need to double check. This is a Zutter Bind It All, but if you don't have one of these, you could totally, um, if you laminated them, or even if you use uh, sheet protectors, you could just use binder rings. Uh, you could just punch three holes in the laminated uh, sheet and put it in a binder, or just have it just like this with your binder rings. Because that's actually what I do when I'm creating a new template. I actually use sheet protectors and binder rings. And I use that so that it's easy to move in and out and move things around and all of that jazz. Um, it's not permanent, I guess. But this is more of a permanent, you know, waterproof solution to, um, to workbook. Because workbooks get a lot of use if you, you know, make uh, more than one of the album. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take, I'm going to use my bind it all. I'm going to take my front and back cover, since those are the same, and I'm going to start with, I'm going to line up, there's this little knot right here, I'll try to bring that clip right there. I'm going to line the actual cardstock paper up to that little notch there, not the laminate sheet, but just the cardstock, and then I'm going to push. So I have those holes, right? So now I'm going to flip it over this way. So now the holes are on the right. And I'm going to punch all the way down. This is really hard to do and film at the same time. Ooh, I need to clean out 
the reservoir it's not punching you know where it, where it holds um, holds the bits that you punch through I think I need to clean mine out anyways we'll just keep going So when you get down to the bottom, see how it's hanging on to, well you might not be able to see that, but it is, a little bit. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim that off. Alright, so when you get down to this part, you want to make sure that your holes don't extend past the cardstock. So you just kind of want to eyeball it, um, and again, matching that cardstock up with this little indent indentation right there and you just really can't go wrong right so the hole doesn't go past the laminate sheet right so there's the front and back covers uh, both cut at the same time so then for the all the rest of the sheets I'm actually gonna I'm gonna flip them over to where they're upside down here and I'm gonna do maybe three at a time and I'm gonna line up that cardstock with that indentation there and I'm going to push then I'm going to flip it around and work my way down the sheets here Right, so see this one, it'll stop just at the right spot, right? Okay, so that, that's, since I'm working backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of these. I'm going to do three at a time. It won't, it won't take no time at all. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got everything punched, ready to get binded, -ed -ed. <laughs> binded, -ed, binded, binded, bound. <laughs> there we go. I have gone through and I've checked, you know, front cover and make sure everything is in order. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and the back cover. Now, normally, I would wait to bind this until I have all of my traceable templates inside the workbook because that way you can really adjust for the height. But since I've already made one, I know uh, it, the um, which binding I can use uh, for the amount that I need. Does that make sense? So, for this particular template, um, I'm only going to use a half inch. I'm going to use a half inch wire. These are Zutter. And these are antique brass. This is just what I have. I'm just going to use the half inch wire to bind this up. But if you are doing a different size template, go ahead, put all your traceable templates inside, and then take a ruler and measure how tall it is. Maybe kind of squish it a little bit and measure it, and then pick your binding uh, wires based on that. All right, so I'm just going to grab one of these out of here, and I'm going to count my holes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And I believe there's 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. There is 24, so I'm going to cut two of them off. Just got some wire snipper thingies. So um, this is what I mean by amount. So there's each one of these is what I'm counting. The little skinny, the little skinny bits right here. Well, my camera will tell you what it's like. No. So these two little skinny bits is what I'm counting as one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna cut two of those off, but I'm gonna cut it over here in the large part, right? 
So I'm just going to snip that off. So this is how much I snipped off. Whoa. <laughs> That's it. That's what I snipped off. So now, before we put it uh, uh, in the binding machine, what I want you to do is I want you to take that back cover and I want you to flip it around onto the front cover. Okay, so again, so this is the back cover and then it would be like this, right? So take it, take the back cover, flip it out, and then flip it on top, okay? So now I'm going to take this binding strip and I'm just going to, whoops, and I'm going to feed the pages onto the binding strip and did I get them all? Well, almost, almost got them all. So I'm going in from the top of my pile and adding um, all the pages that away. So then we have something that looks like this. So this is the back page. This is the front page, right? So the back page should be on top. Okay. So now I'm going to bring my binding machine over here and I'm going to make sure that it's set on a half an inch down here at the bottom. And when I set my wires down in here, I'm going to do it at like six at a time, one, two, three, four, five, six at a time, and I'm gonna back up the whole set. This is what works best for me. It may not work for you, but this is what I like to do. I'm gonna back up the whole set of wires to this back, um, what is this called, this back um, oh, plate. I'm gonna set that up against there, and then, oops, now see if I wasn't, filming I could get my head over top and this wouldn't be so awkward. Now make sure they're flat to the base here and then I'm gently gonna squeeze just like that. Right so I'm actually moving the little skinny parts the little skinny thingies I'm moving those I'm squeezing those versus squeezing the bigger part. So then when I squeeze it together see how perfect that is? Perfect. Now, when, the, when you use bigger wires, that doesn't always work. You have to do some adjusting. But anyway, so with this half an inch, it's really nice. So lay it down in there flat. Gently squeeze it closed. Scoot it down. Lay it in there flat. Gently close. Scoot it down. Oops, I need to be more careful. close so all of these have closed perfectly perfectly I hope you can see okay you probably can't but that's okay <laughs> so again here's my back cover I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flip it over and flip it around so now we've got a book so the back covers now on the back and this is the front cover so it's all nice and bound together right easy okay so the next step I'm gonna move this out of the way the bound book the next step is to take your other set that you printed out and we're gonna trim these out so for example for this page I'm gonna trim all three of these out I'm gonna leave this whole piece together right and I'm gonna trim them out and I'm gonna be super super careful right Okay, so for this page, like this is the matte page for this. There are two cover mats on this page. You don't need both of these for your traceable templates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these two uh, very carefully out um, so that I can put them in the workbook and then I'm not gonna use this piece right here. You could, um, if you wanted to, if you didn't wanna throw it away, you could use the inside here for something else, which, which is actually really a good idea. So go through and cut everything out. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut everything out very as precisely as I can get it. And then I will come back and I will show you 
um, for example, like when I did one, we're just going to need one of these. So we'll go through and we'll add every single item to the workbook together. But I'm going to go through and trim everything out like that. And then I will be back. Okay, I've got everything trimmed out, so I thought we would just go page by page and add it into the uh, completed workbook here. Well, not completed, but the already bound workbook. So, move some things out of the way. All right, so page one is pretty simple, but we do need to do something to this piece right here. That is the outside spine wrap. I'm just gonna get my scoreboard out. And EK Tools scoreboard and my stylus. And I'm gonna go ahead and score all of these lines. Because when you use this as a traceable template, you wanna be able to fold these pieces out of the way. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and prep all those score marks. And then, tell you what, my printer just printed kind of weird this last time, but that's okay. It's a workbook. Okay, so we're starting by prepping all of those. Um, actually, I'm gonna burnish them pretty good so that they fold really nicely. So when you lay this down on a piece of paper and you go to trace around it and then you're like, okay, I need to trace this, you just flip it back on itself. So the only place you would want to put some adhesive would be right in this middle part, which takes me to, this is the uh, adhesive that I use for my workbooks. I used uh, the Scotch Advanced Tape Glider, the ATG gun, and I also use cheap um, tape, not the Scotch brand tape, because it's super permanent. I just use this cheap tape, and it comes like this, and I'll put a link down below. It is uh, from tapedepot.com. This, um, I learned about this tape from Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, so I've been using it ever since because it's just tacky enough to hold my templates to the workbook and it's cheap enough that if I need to reapply it's not that big a deal does that make sense okay so I'm just gonna run right in the middle I'm just gonna run a, a, a strip of tape there and then I am gonna take it and de-stick it on my arm a little bit try not to get my sweater so de-stick it on my arm a little bit and then I'm just gonna stick it there just like that so now that is ready to go and then here is the spine piece. Same with that. I'm just going to de-stick it. The glare, I'm having a hard time seeing because of all the lights. And then there is the cover piece. So I'm just one little strip. I hope y'all can see that. Just one little strip of tape. You don't need to cover the whole thing. Now I've seen other people do it other ways. So you do it however you want to do it. This is just the way I do it. Okay, so then page two, which is this page right here, is the mats for these. So I've already got these cut out. Let me scoot everything over here. So here's the mat for the spine. I'm gonna go ahead, put a piece, a strip, a piece. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that, I know. I'm gonna put a strip of tape there, de-stick it just a little bit, and I'm gonna stick it on this spine piece right here. You could if you wanted to, and it's totally up to you. You could come to this page, actual page number two, and stick it on top of there. But I just think this makes it way easier and more convenient to stick it on top of the piece that you're actually going to be matting, I guess. So when I take this out and I trace out my spine, I'll have my mat for it right there. And this mat also mats. It's the same thing, really. I guess, actually, I wonder if it should be put out here like this 
because this will be the outside wrap. Yeah, let's put it on there. We'll just put it there. And then here is the cover mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape on the back of there. De-stick it just a little. And then stick it on top of there. So page number two comes with two cover mats. So that if you were printing this page off uh, uh, using like pattern paper, you're printing it onto pattern paper, then you would have both the front and the back mats. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it for now. I might remove some of this excess paper because um, as a backup so I'm just going to stick it in this pocket so if I mess that mat up I've got another one so I don't have to print out a whole nother set of those and then uh, next page page number three I didn't print this out I didn't I don't there are four sets of binding strips on this page and I didn't think I don't really trace out my binding strips so you can if you want to just print out a page uh, cut it out and score it but again I, d I don't usually um, trace out my binding pieces all right so then here page number four I printed off one of the uh, printed off page number four onto a 32 pound paper so I'm just going to go ahead and put it together I'm not even scoring it. I'm just folding it. It's super simple. And then I'm going to fold this bottom piece up. So the reason I wanted to go ahead and have one of these is if I wanted to use this in a different project. I could take this off of here and I could take it to another project and I could say, well, what if I fold it in half? Um, will it work in here? Or what? You know what I mean? So you can... It's just nice to have for reference if you want to use it in other products. Other products, other projects. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put this together. I'm having issues talking today. This is just Art Glitter Glue AGG. Um, this is not for glitter. It's not just for glitter. I'm sure that might have been the original intent or something, but it's just white glue. It's just really nice white glue. And again, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. So, yeah. Okay. It tacks pretty fast, and I like that. What do we got going on here? Right? So, on the back side of here, oops, sorry. <laughs> Bumped you. On the back side of here, once again, I'm going to go ahead. You don't have to um, put a piece, a piece, a bit of tape on the back, and I'm just going to stick it here. I could just put it in the pocket. Did I have a pocket? Yeah, I could have just stuffed it in the pocket and it had been the same thing, but anyways. Okay, so then I wanted to show you page number five. Um, you can, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this to my mom to give her the option, but you can cut this out um, and score it and use it as a traceable template. But since it's a full page, I tend to print those out just directly onto the paper, whether it be white cardstock or pattern paper or what have you. So I'm going to skip this one, so I'll give her the choice if she wants to cut it out. She certainly can, but I did cut out the mats for this. And so these are the mats. These are 6M, so there's the mats. So I did cut these out, and again, same thing. I'm going to put some tape on the back side. Even this teeny tiny little piece right here that mats the small flap. Well, so I'm just going to lay it right over top like that. I'm going to go ahead and put tape on both of these pieces. And that goes right there. And then this goes right here. Oh! I did want to point that out to you guys. Um, I was asked about this, if I did it wrong, if something was wrong. Um, the mat is the opposite. But when you fold this together, um, this piece is going to be facing the other way. So this is like a page, right? So when you fold this all together, when you fold the page this way, the mat will be facing this way. So when you print, if you was to print it out onto pattern paper, the direction would be correct. So um, don't don't be discouraged by the fact that this looks kind of strange because I, I planned it that way. 
Okay, page number seven. All right, so what I did for this one is I cut this out because this can be used as a traceable template. So if you wanted to use this page, so you get two, which you could totally just make one page just using these two. You just cut the tabs off of one all the way around and leave the tabs on the other, which however which way you're making your page or your pocket or what have you. Or you can take this and just trace this piece out and use both of these with their tabs. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put one in here just in case I need it because I tear this one up. So I'm going to go, put, go ahead and put one of them in there. And I also wanted to point out to you that I, you can see I cut all the tabs off. You don't have to. You could leave all the tabs on, score them, and then that way if you wanted to just trace one out with whatever tabs you wanted, you could totally do that too. But you can also do it both ways. You can do it this way where you just got the base of it, and then you can do one where you have all the tabs attached. Either way. Okay, and then the next page, 8M, which is this page back here, I have the mats for that. So I fully cut out one of the mats. And I'm going to stick it on top of there. And then here is the other mat. I'm just going to stick it in there uh, so if I have a backup, if I mess that mat up, I'm just going to stick it in the pocket here. Just like that. All right, moving on. Page number, uh-oh. Page number nine. Same thing, there are two sets, so I'm not gonna cut out one set, but I did cut out the other, so I'm gonna stick one set of them in the pocket, just in case I need it. And then here is the belly band and the main base page. Again, same thing, you could cut it out with all the tabs on there and score that and then use that as your traceable template if need be. Or do like I did and cut all the tabs off. Or you could do like, you know, do one where you cut all the tabs off and one set where you leave all the tabs on. Again, I'll let my mom decide if she wants to do that or not. And then on page 10M is the mats. So once again, I've got two sets. I'm gonna go ahead and put one set of the mats in the pocket and then I'm going to attach the other set to the, the main base. So there's the belly band mat. Well. <laughs> and then there's the mat for the main base. All right, next page, page 11. I have, again, two sets of these, so I only fully cut out one set. Uh-oh, where'd the belly band go? There it is. So I've cut one set out, and, uh-oh, I guess i am got them mixed up somehow. And I only cut one of these tickets out, so I've got an extra set that I'm going to stick in here. And extra tickets that I'm going to stick in there. And so I'm going to stick that ticket right there. This is page 11, so I'm going to put the belly band right there. There, so then page 12M are the mats for that. And for some reason, I cut them both out. I wonder why I did that. I don't know. But we only need, we, we only need one set. So we'll put all of these mats in the pocket. This goes there. 
this goes there. And the ticket mat goes up there. Okay. Page 13. Um, okay, so I did cut these out. So if you wanted to... Um, why did I cut these specifically? I think I cut... Why did I cut this? Oh, I know why. <laughs> Sometimes, you guys. So this is an insert, right? So... If you wanted to, instead of having the insert pocket, you can have just this big, large, tag-shaped insert. So, I did go ahead and trim this out. I wasn't going to trim this out, but I decided to go ahead and do it just in case. I don't know what you would use it for. I guess you could use it for, um, you know, another, like you could put, do a pocket. You could just have to add your tabs if you wanted to, but that kind of defeats the point where you could just print out the whole thing. Anyway. So, I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and attach both of these on here. Even though I don't think that, I mean, she might trace out the whole tag pocket thing, but, okay. And then, here is this other part of page 13. Um, again, I did not cut that out because, you know, normally you would just print this out. So, I guess you could, but I'm going to leave that up to her. If she wants to make that a traceable template, she totally can. And then I have the mats for page 13. So, I'm just going to go ahead and add these. top of there. I'm just using the inside of my hand this time instead of my arm. I don't know. And then these are the envelope mats. I'm going to go ahead and add tape to all three of these. And add them down here. So, moving on, let's do page 15, and let's see, what all do we have for page 15? I think here we go. I have cut everything out. Oh, I do need to, this little mini pocket down here, I am going to go ahead and score this, because this actually fits on both of these, but there's only one on the page. So, if you wanted a little mini pocket for each one, you would need two. So, I'm going to go ahead and score these tabs. And I'm going to go ahead and flip these over one way and then I'm going to flip it over the other way. And I'm going to burnish it so that it's nice and crisp. Okay. So now I can just take this and take it to a piece of paper. And then I can trace all the way around it and flip my little tabs up and trace, trace, so on and so forth. So let's add a little bit of, woo, sorry about that. A little bit of tape. Touch that down. I'm going to go ahead. These are, these are good to have as a base traceable template because you might just want a quick little tag and you don't want to print off the whole thing. You just grab this, trace it out onto your paper, your pattern paper, whatever it is you're using, and easy peasy. And then here, this is the one that is a lot like um, earth-shaped, earth th the same size as a shipping tag. So this one can be extremely useful because I like using those shipping tags. I think they're really great size. So I wanted to add it into this template for that reason. Um, so that way you didn't have to go buy a bunch of shipping tags. 
You can just make your own. And then these are inserts. Once again, you may want, you know, five of these inserts, but you don't want five of everything else. Do you know what I mean? So you can just trace them out and be done. All right, so now I've got all the uh, mats for that, which are on page 16M. So let's just start adding in the mats. Right there, like that. And right there, like that. There's the little mini pocket mat. Cute little square. Right there. There's the mat for the shipping tag size tag. You can also use that for the actual shipping tag if you have that size shipping tag anyways you could actually mat a shipping tag with that <laughs> all right so you can see how convenient this makes your mini album making it makes it much faster so if you take the time this one isn't as hard and as time consuming as some of the workbooks have been but if you just take your time and do it the part that you really need to slow down and take your time with is when you trim things out for the traceable template part that way you don't have to um, worry about oh, i gotta compensate because i cut that crooked or or what have you so all righty okay so th this here again i'm gonna leave this as is and she can if she wants to make this a traceable template she can but i'm just gonna put it in here for her because this would be something that I would just print out and use. But I did want to show you another way to do the tickets. So I'm going to grab the scoreboard again. And I'm going to score in between like that. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish those mm, score marks, or score lines, not score marks, right? So then, I think, if I fold it, if I fold it correctly, and I'm careful, I can trim these corners out neatly, we'll see. There's the one. Probably didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's see how I did. Oh, not too bad. I got a little carried away on this one. But anyway, now you've got a whole line of tickets if you wanted to make yourself like a strip of tickets. So, did I bump you again? I'm just, I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape on each ticket just in case I end up ripping it off. But if you just wanted to do one, you could just lay one down and then trace it and then, you know, move it down and trace another one. You know what I mean? You don't have to have a whole strip of tickets, but I thought it might be kind of fun. And then here's the mats, which are on page 18M. So I've got all the mats for the envelope. And then here are the ticket mats, but I only cut one out. So I'm going to stick that. Um, oh, that's not the right mat for that. Some of them are different. Oh, well, maybe we're going to have to cut them all out. Hmm. Well, already. I guess I better. And I guess I better cut the other ones, too. I bet. I'll save that for another time. Yeah, because I didn't just make one ticket and, you know, copy it over and over and over again. I did make a set of three tickets. <laughs> so, it makes sense that they wouldn't be exact.
Okay, so which one is this one supposed to go? Is this the middle and this the top? Or is this the middle? Maybe I just cut that one wrong and this one's the top. Either way, they'll work. So if I wasn't recording just then, I would have taken a little bit better, a little bit more time cutting those little curves out. But mom won't be mad. I hope not anyway. <laughs> All right, and here is the envelope. I'm just going to add some tape to them. Let's start at the top. So then this mat goes here. This mat goes here. And this mat goes there. Okay. Next page. Okay, here's another pocket multi-tag page. And for this one, like here is another, these two are duplicates of what's on the other page. And then this is also the little mini pocket, which is a duplicate from what's on the other page. So I just cut out that square instead of leaving all the tabs. And then there's an insert. And that's interesting. I can see some of the, um, it's almost like the thingy wasn't hot enough when I, when I ran it through the laminator. It probably wasn't. Okay, so all of, and then this piece here, I just cut out the main base. So if you wanted to make a flip out pocket, you, you just, print this out and then you trace another one out to attach it to. So I just did that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and attach these down. You didn't have to, if you didn't want to, redo those two, you know, cut those two out or this little mini pocket, but I just figured it might be easier for mom if I say on page 19. I think it might be easier for her if I say, okay, um, I'm using the uh, the mini page on page 19, and also on that page is this tag, and blah, you know. So, that's totally up to you whether you want to do that or not. I think I even did it in my own workbook. I'm pretty sure I did. Let me look. Oh. Page 19. Yeah, I went ahead and cut them out in my own, so. <laughs> and stick that one down, and then the mats for all of those are right here. Again, I went ahead and cut out all the mats. mat for the mini page it goes right here so if you just take the time to cut all the, everything out all at once then you can just go through and attach everything down and it goes pretty quick so the mats for these these are the mats and they're on page 20m which is the next page obviously that's the way I set this one up so the mats are directly the next page from the page that you're working on so that's page 20 M those are the mats page 21 this is one of the glassing bags once again um, I went ahead and saved these because they can be used so I'm gonna put them in the pocket here I kind of want to do like a little punch right there it's easier to get get it open <laughs> But we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one together. And this one will be good for taking it out and placing it on different places. Hey, do I want this here? Do I want this here? How does this look here? You know, it has like a little tester. And close that up. Again, I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. I love this little tiny one. I think it is so cute. Of course, I love many things anyway. 
just cute. Right, and then I'm just gonna put some tape on the back of that. And voila. Love it. Love that thing. Also, I don't know if I, does it say in here, possible inserts or tags four and five? Yeah, it does. Yeah, tags four and five. I didn't know if I put that on there. Or these instats, which is the next page. So then this very last page, again, I only put information on two of them. So if you print, you know, your guidebook out, don't throw these out because these can be used. Um, yeah, I feel like my laminator wasn't hot enough because look, that's not even stuck down. But that's okay. Nothing we can do about it now. Okay, so those can be used at a later time. But then I, I trimmed one out, the whole thing, and then I trimmed the inside out so that this could be laid down on a photo or a piece of pattern paper traced out and attached to that so it looks like an Instax photo. All right. And we're going to go ahead and put tape on those and just attach them down. You could, actually, you could... Um, literally put this on top there like that you don't have to have it separated right and so that's it well not yet that's not it entirely okay so the last thing I'm gonna do is I didn't do this for myself I'm just doing it as I go but I'm gonna do it for my mom I'm, I'm gonna go through and the ones that are meant to be like tags I'm gonna go ahead and measure not this one but I'm going to go ahead and measure the center and put a hole reinforcement and punch the hole that way um, she can do that. I guess those, I guess those can be, um, hmm. I'm thinking here, cause these, these are really meant to be pages. Well, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a sheet of paper really quick. Let's do this. Oh, it's good. What's in here? Good. Um. Aha. I've got this sheet that I've been using. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm just going to take some Avery, <laughs> Avery uh, permanent reinforcement labels. And they're white and I'm gonna take I might do a couple I think and I'm gonna take what do I have here dusty Concord uh oh I need a thingy I need a thingy okay <laughs> sorry I need to find one I'm just gonna take my dusty Concord distress ink and a blending tool and I'm gonna make hers purple I think I used green as I've been going through mine, but that's what I was using to make the album that we were working on. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple. So I'm just going to color these purple. Takes it no time. Okay. back to the album or the workbook not the album all right so since i don't have a main base layer there i'm just going to take this uh the mat i guess i'm going to scoot that out of the way and use it solely so i'm just going to find the center and i'm going to mark it And then I'm going to put a hole reinforcement over it like that and then I'm going to punch a hole. Like that. So now if she wanted to make that a actual tag shaped, she'll have it marked for her. She can just quickly take it and um, mark it and that way she doesn't have to measure every time so then on page seven I'm gonna mark it as well it's 
so hard to see. Without getting right over top of it, it's hard to see, you know what I mean? So I'm literally eyeballing it, and we all know I'm not good at that. <laughs> Okay, so then put my hole reinforcement there, punch a hole, and if she doesn't like where the hole's punched, she does not have to use that. So I guess I could have asked her, but I didn't. All right, let's see, moving on. This piece, this piece is tricky. Because, and I wasn't making sure my mats were on there correctly. Okay, let's, ah. So, it would be attached just like this. Okay. I'm going to mark it and then move this out of the way. I'm going to try to mark it. Okay, it's a little too deep. Okay. I'm going to mark there. So I just laid those two on top of each other. And I'm going to put my whole reinforcement there. Oh, goodness. Punch a hole. Right, so I've got that one. So I'm gonna put that one back in the book. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole reinforcement on here. So if she just wanted to make her a large tag insert, she totally could. I had this a little crooked. That's okay. Right? So now she's got the hole prepared for that. Alright. And then these are tags. So before I uh, know that one's on there pretty good. You just need to make sure your mat's on there pretty straight. I, I wasn't doing that. I did that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I hope I'm doing a good job of centering this since I can't get over top. It's really hard to see. I might mark a couple. Do it more assembly line-ish. Right, so you just go through and hmm, and mark them all. That one's not in the center. Mark it.
Okay, this one should be the same as this one. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten this puppy back up. Punch a hole. Mark it that away. Okay, so you kind of get the point. I'm going to go through and do all the ones that need to be done. And then I'll come back and show you which ones I did. Okay, there really wasn't that many more. Um, but I got them all done. So page 5, I did that one. Page 7, did that one. Page 13, I did the tag pocket insert. Page 15. Um, you could do page 17 if you wanted to make that like a tag, um, tag top, flip, flap, closure, whatever. <laughs> page 19, I did those tags. And that's it. So obviously, I didn't need both of these sheets, but that's okay. I've got them. If I need them, maybe I'll give her some. I'll just stick them in here somewhere. Ooh, wonder if they'll fit in the little mini. No. No, but that'd been cute. Here, let's do this. Just cause. We'll stick them in her little glassy bag there. It'd be like a little surprise. <laughs> but okay. Well, that is it, you guys. I don't think there's anything else to, to tell you. Everything is done. So that is how I made the glassine bag mini album printable template workbook. Um, I will have a link below to the whole playlist if you would like to see how I made my other workbooks or some of my other. I didn't make them all on video. Um, I'll have a link below to the first album that we've already made with the glassine bag templates. I'll have a link below to my Amazon list to all the different products that I use. So if you want to check those out. Um, there'll be a link down there and I guess that's it So if you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section below and If you haven't subscribed to my channel already go ahead and hit this little button right there and hit that bell notification So that you might maybe get notified when I upload a video and Then here is a link to my Etsy shop if you want to check out the templates and there might be some other videos up here on the top of the screen that you may enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.